Uh, we're going to begin this hour uh, with an environmental story. The uh, grip of drought that is intensifying in the West has led scientists to turn to an unusual ally in the fight to limit the effects of climate change. We're talking about the largest rodent in North America, <laughs> the beaver. Our Earth 365 series focuses on issues affecting the health of our planet year round. And our Jonathan Vigliotti got to see firsthand how scientists in California and Utah are using beavers to help create landscapes resistant to drought and fire. In the drought-stricken American West, an animal long considered a pest is now in demand. Beavers are largely nocturnal animals, meaning they're most active at night. It's very rare to see them so close. You ready to go? Yeah. To get out of here. Okay, let's do it. We hiked down a rugged hillside with scientists. He's a heavy guy. <laughs> and a 90 pound trapped beaver to take him to his new home. Well, what we're hoping for is a place with deep water. Our hope is that they start building dams. It's the latest chapter for a species that's been desired and despised. For centuries, the nation's largest rodent was a fashion staple. That's new in hats for winter. Coveted for its fur. And of course, the old reliable beaver. They were nearly hunted to extinction by 1900 until they went out of style and the mammal's population rebounded. But soon, they became a headache for landowners who didn't appreciate the flooding their dams caused. They were trapped and killed. The lucky ones were relocated, flown, and parachuted into remote terrain. And a most unusual and novel trip ends for Mr. Beaver. But as mega wildfires fueled by climate change have ripped through the West, researchers made an incredible discovery in the ashes. A beaver dam created an oasis that survived the flames. Scientist Emily Fairfax couldn't believe her eyes. And I was like, this is unreal. Like, does this happen everywhere? Where are we right now? We are just downstream of the main beaver dam, which is holding back an absolutely enormous volume of water. So without the beaver dam in this area, mm -hmm. what would this be like right now? This would be bone dry and sandy, which is what it was before the beavers moved in. As Fairfax showed in an animation she created, when beavers build dams, they prevent rainwater. Hello, you're welcome to Climate Change Crusaders channel. Please, we are encouraging you to subscribe to our channel, like and share for more insightful Contents that will be they shared. prevent rainwater and snowmelt from draining down rivers and into oceans. The result is a natural firebreak and reservoir capable of storing water for years and releasing it slowly over time. This 10 foot tall beaver dam, a web of sticks and mud in Atascadero, California, created the only lush landscape for miles. Beavers move in here and they slow this water down. A lot of it does go into recharging the groundwater and that's what we're pumping for irrigation. That's what we use for our food. That's what we use for our lawns. A lot of the water in California is not from snowmelt. It's from the groundwater and these beavers are recharging it for us. So they're sort of depositing water into the bank that we take out at a later date. The West's historic drought and Fairfax's research has led to a reckoning for farmers and landowners. Beavers can be good, but with so many of them removed from the landscape, reintroducing them now requires help from humans. We're here in Utah, just outside of Salt Lake City, and this morning we're building a beaver dam. Volunteers are now building starter dams, what's known in the industry as beaver dam analogs. The owner of this ranch heard about the new program and wanted in. Nick Bowis is a lead on the project. Why do beavers need human help to build a dam? Well, a lot of times if it's too shallow, they're just kind of like walking hot dogs for predators. They need deep water to swim. They're very graceful in deeper water. So beavers, what they do is they get in here and they just scoop the mud up and they just come and I grab a whole bunch, push it with their chest and hands, and, and they just work it in all the crevices. This is very similar to what a beaver would naturally do. I would get on my belly and uh, <laughs> push it in, but I don't want to get that wet. It's amazing all the steps that we have to do to help out something that should be a natural process. 
But the most challenging step is finding the right candidates for release. That's where Nate Norman with Utah State University comes in. He traps beavers from land where they're considered nuisances, then takes them back to this beaver lab where he weighs them, checks them for injuries. Real minor little notch chips them for tracking and research, and then places them in what he calls a beaver bunker, where they wait until their permanent home, the one we've been prepping, is ready. Which brings us back to where we began. On this day, we're releasing two beavers. The hope is they'll soon start a colony of their own. More than a thousand analog dams have been successfully resettled with more in the works. It's kind of a win-win. You know, we deal with the nuisance problem at the same time trying to use uh, an animal that's incredibly good at restoring streams, put, putting them to work. The North American beaver, once just a pest, now a climate change engineer. For CBS Mornings, Jonathan Vigliotti, Colville, Utah. Vigliotti looked good in that black t-shirt and the wings, I would say, good. it looked great. But when that beaver came out of the yeah. cage and took a look at when the dam right. that Jonathan helped build, I don't think they were pumped. Y'all got me going back out here like, in dirty water. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the beavers, though. Yeah, I know. Who knew? Vig's out there putting in work. That's his Hasselhoff moment right That's there. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Shout out to Vig's.